Well, hello, and welcome to the Lockhart Radio Podcast. I am Felicia Lockhart. Today, we're looking at an article that was written and published back in February of 2020, dealing with the new particle accelerator that was in there in New York. It's written by Jeremy Hobson, and it was published on WBUR.org's website. It is with the Undersecretary for Science at the Department of Energy at the time, Paul Dauber. In this article, it's an interview, so there'll be questions and there'll be answers. And I'll interject every now and again when I remember something that matches this that we've already done here on Headlines with a Voice or on the Lockhart Perspective as it relates to um, any of these particle colliders. Most of you who know me well know that I'm really interested in uh, particle physics and things of that nature. So we've done a lot of shows here on this channel and the Lockhart Perspective that sort of deal with this topic, especially Fermilab and CERN. So again, it's with uh, the Undersecretary of Energy back in 2020, Paul Dabber. Quote, the United States will soon have its first new particle collider in decades. Earlier this year, the Department of Energy announced that Brookhaven National Laboratory in Upton, New York, will be the home to the Electronic Ion Collider, or the EIC, which will investigate what's inside two subatomic particles, protons and neutrons. On Brookhaven's website, it describes this instrument as a machine that will unlock the secrets of the strongest force in nature. It's essentially an electron microscope that shoots electrons and protons and neutrons in order to measure them, Paul Dauber says, the Undersecretary for Science at the Department of Energy. He continues with, you need to accelerate it to very high levels of energy in order to basically shoot it, to do the mapping, a little bit like an MRI or a CT scan for the inner workings of matter, he explains. The electron beam is accelerated very fast in a circle, Dauber says. We will generate an electron beam and accelerate it to very, very close to the speed of light. We basically circle around them, imparting energy into the electron beam until it reaches the level that we want it so that we can image the protons and neutrons. Scientists can't accelerate it exactly to the speed of light because as any piece of matter approaches that speed, its mass changes, Dauber says. He continues with, that mass change makes it increasingly hard to get faster and faster. And so as you reach the speed of light, you reach an infinite amount of energy needed to get to that last step. And therefore we cannot do that. Here are some more of the interview highlights on the particle applications of this research. He says, well, the basic science research that this country has done, and we have led particle physics since World War II, since the Manhattan Project, and a lot of other technologies that we use today have come out of the basic research that came out of the national labs, including in physics. These accelerators can be used for many different things. The first one is medical isotopes that are used for cancer treatments. So I think as many people know, you look at nuclear medicine and nuclear imaging, which is a core part of the medical community right now for treating diseases, that these accelerators can produce those isotopes on the nuclear medicine side that are really critical. And many times you have to produce some very locally. You have to have accelerators around the country that make these isotopes because they decay relatively quickly, as some of them, he says. And so for us to move forward, that certainly helps the medical area. Another one, he says, which is I think very interesting here in the near term is around quantum information technologies using quantum, which is inputting data into atoms rather than transistors, is basically a particle physics problem. And so the same equipment that we're looking at, technology that we're, develop, that we've, uh, that we're developing here and we've developed in the past for a kind of older version of accelerators is the exact same particle technology that, we, that will be used for the upcoming quantum computing and quantum internet, he says. He goes on. Another area is around detectors. The MRI machine came out of the DOE, National Nuclear Physics Work. And so we certainly expect that we have improvements in MRI and CT machines from detectors, just like we helped invent them. 
The question by the uh, interviewer was on why this collider won't be up and running until 2030. Dauber responds. So first of all, one of the advantages of this particular site and building it here is that we've actually, uh, we're actually using some existing collider infrastructure. There's a collider at Brookhaven National Lab right now called the RHIC, which is a relativistic hedron collider. So there's already a loop there that was accelerating other types of ions. There was an accelerator infrastructure already there. And so we're going to finish that mission in terms of imaging for nuclear physics in 2024. Between now and then, Dauber adds, we're actually going to be starting both the engineering design in more detail, as well as design around the components like the accelerators. And then in 2024, when we take down the RIC Collider at Brookhaven National Lab, then we'll start actually installing. And so from then, it will be about, take about six years to do both the construction and then do the commissioning and startup. Now, the question was posed to him on why this is the first particle accelerator built in the United States in decades. Now, this is me speaking. There are several colliders in the United States, several. So whenever I hear people just focus on CERN, I just shake my head because I'm like, gee, if they only knew <laughs> that we've had these all over the United States and the world for a very long time. Here is the answer that he gives to why this is the first particle accelerator built in the United States in decades. Quote, there's a bit of history around these accelerators. They cost a lot of money. There was one that was looked at a couple of decades ago called the Superconducting Super Collider, which ran into some uh, challenges, he says. The United States decided to invest in CERN the European Organization for Nuclear Research at the Hedron Collider in Geneva for that particular piece of science. We've been focusing on other areas. So one of them has been the neutrino piece of infrastructure at Fermilab outside of Chicago. Now, this is me again, Felicia, interjecting. Um, if you guys remember, there was a time that I did a story on Fermilab and how they're using you know, gold and all these other things. I will put that down below in the description so that you guys can get a whole piece together of everything that's been going on here in the U.S. Now, he answers after he mentions that they've been focusing on other areas. Some of them have been the neutrino piece of the infrastructure at Fermilab outside of Chicago. He says, quote, we've been investing in Europe for some colliders over the last, you know, near the term, the near term, he says. And by the way, he adds, we continue that is for that particular type of collider. That's his words. And by the way, we continue that is for that particular type of collider. We're increasing our investment by the United States into European, into the European collider at CERN. But we decided to take a look at building this particular collider in the United States. I think the key thing for your listeners, he adds, to, to kind of understand is that the budget for this office, the budget for the Office of Science and um, in general at the federal level, including NASA and the National Science Foundation and the Nas National Institutes of Health, funny how he adds those three together, <laughs> let me finish, are at an all time high. And he says, we're very excited about the support, very bipartisan support from both Congress and ultimately the president signing the budgets for all time highs. He concludes with, so we're very excited about that. Now, that is the end of that piece. But there are a couple of other stories that I'm going to want to share with you guys so you can get a really good piece, um, put all that together for you. Let's go on ahead and uh, look down below in the description so that you can see some of the work that we've already done. Again, everything will be linked after this um, particular premiere is done. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for hanging out with us for the past handful of minutes here. What, about nine or 10 minutes? Thank you guys for hanging out. And thank you for leaving your comments. And uh, I hope to uh, see you all again really soon. Now, uh, we're going to do a whole piece dealing with CERN and dealing with a couple of other things that I think are very important as everybody has their eyes on the eclipse 
that's coming up very soon. I personally don't think that it's going to be as bad as what a lot of people have stated, but I do think that it's preparational. I think it's preparational. I think that we're getting prepared for something. I think everything means something in the scheme of things, but they don't necessarily mean what everybody else thinks. Hmm. For Headlines with a Voice, this has been the Lockhart Radio Podcast, and I'm Felicia Lockhart.